Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this day that you make. We're going to rejoice and be glad in this day. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who make all this possible. Thank you for your holy, written, precious word. This is Choice Radio, 92.9 FM, The Christian Family. We invite you to get something to write with and something to write on. As we get ready to get started, let us pray. Hallelujah on tonight, Father. Father, we thank you on tonight, Father. We glorify you tonight. We magnify you, Father God. We thank you for the joy, unspeakable joy, Father God. But most of all, Lord God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, O God. He was a man, O God, that he knew no sin, but yet and still he died for us, Father. And we thank you for that, Heavenly Father. And Father, we thank you for everyone that is out there on the internet, Lord God. Those who are on the phone lines, Father God, and for those who are on the radio, Father God. We thank you for those, Lord God, all those attentive ears on tonight. Lord God, that have listening ears and receptible hearts, Father God, to hear your word. We thank you for everything that you're going to do tonight, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are article, Father God, that you would use us, Father God, to minister onto your people, oh God. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord God. We take nothing for granted, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for our pastor on tonight, Father God. We thank you for the fresh anointing that you have given him once again, Father God, to minister onto your people, Lord God. God, we thank you, we glorify you, and we magnify no other than you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It is, again, a wonderful opportunity and privilege. We're not going to take this lightly because the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two the sword. The apostle Paul said to his son in the faith, Timothy, from a child that was known the Holy Scripture, was able to make the wise, yet he tell Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. The Berean Christians in the early church, they studied the Scripture daily. They searched the Scriptures out daily to see if these things were so. So we want to be as the Berean Christians and search the Scriptures out daily to see if these things were so. My people, my favorite scripture, you know by now, is my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. Look at something here in Big John. Let's start off tonight in Big John chapter 8 and see what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious word. Get something to write with and something to write on. Big John chapter 8. I have a red letter edition. The head of the church is speaking. The apostle John is recording. He's re for to us the love apostle. He's the only one in scripture. Maybe there are other people who will lay his head on the Lord's bosom. So he had to be quite close to the Lord. If he lays his head on his bosom, he's referred to as the love apostle. Because God is love. Amen. Big John chapter 8. We want to look at two verses. We want to look at verses 31 and 32. And we want to use those two verses as the 12 inches to make our foot. Big John chapter 8. Verses 31 and 32, get something to write with and something to write on as we look into God holy, written, precious words. Look at those two verses. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, If you continue in my words, then you are my disciple indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So if you don't know the truth, you're not going to be free. The only thing that set you free is the truth. Look at what he said. And notice this. There's a condition to it. In verse 31, Then said Jesus, Lord, Jews will believe on him if you continue. If you continue. So it's not you do it sometimes whenever the spirit moves. No, if you continue. The Berean Christians in the early church, they said they searched the scriptures out daily to see if these things were so. Paul said a young Timothy from a child that was known the Holy Scripture, which was able to make the wise, yet he tell Timothy to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly divine the word of God. Now in this verses here, then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, if you continue in my words, then you are my disciple indeed. So if you don't continue in his words, you're not his disciple. How read this now? If you continue, then you're my disciple. Look at verse 32. And you shall know the truth. But if you continue, then you know the truth. If you continue, then you know the truth. And when you know the truth, then it will make you free. 
Now, the truth is not going to make you free. It's when you know the truth, then you're going to make you free. The truth has been there all oh, forever. This was penned approximately 2,000 years ago. The truth has been there, but we didn't know it. Nobody take damn to show us. Look at that. Look at those verses again. If you continue, if you continue, get a good dictionary and see what that word continue means. If it means sometimes on weekend, once a year, uh, if you, what does it mean? If you continue in my word, then you are my disciple indeed. So if you didn't continue in his word, you're not his disciple. And verse 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, no, the truth doesn't make you free by itself. You have to know it. You have to know it, then it make you free. If you know the truth, when you know the truth, then it will make you free. The truth's been there, but we didn't know it. Nobody take time to show us anything. Just catch as catch can. So if you continue in my words, then you're my disciple indeed. And if you continue, and then you shall, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Look at Big John chapter 14. If you continue, keep that before you. If you continue, not if you stay with it sometimes. If you continue, then you're my disciple, and then you'll know the truth. When you continue, then you'll know the truth. When you continue, then you will know the truth. Big John chapter 14, look at the sixth verse. Big John chapter 14, and look at verse 6. Big John chapter 14, get something to write with and something to write on. Big John chapter 14, look at the sixth verse. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now notice he didn't say, I am one of the truths. So there's only one truth, that's Jesus Christ. He didn't say, I am a truth, I am the truth. I am the way, the truth, the life. So only one truth is Jesus Christ. So everything else is something else. Huh? We titled this ministry, this ministry, we speak the truth. Look at that sixth verse again. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Now keep that before you. He didn't say, I am a truth, I am the truth. So anything else is not the truth. It's something else, but it's not the truth. Because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Big John chapter 1 and John the Baptist made a statement because he is the one to introduce Jesus Christ to us. He said, I must decrease and he must increase. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciple and then you know the truth. I am the way, the truth. I am the way, the truth. Big John chapter 1 and John made a statement here, John, the Apostle John. And John the Baptist is saying something. The Apostle John is recording. Big John chapter 1, look at the 17 verse. Look at the 17 verse. Big John chapter 1, look at verse 17. For a law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So the truth came by Jesus Christ. Look at that verse again. Big John chapter 1, look at the 17 verse. The truth. Speak the truth. I am the way, the truth. Not a truth, the truth. If you keep in my words, you'll know the truth. And when you know the truth, it make you free. If you don't know the truth, you're not going to be free. And that's what happened to all of us for years. Nobody tells us the truth. And we was tied up in knots and going wrong in our circles like the children of Israel in Kadesh Barney for 40 years, just going wrong in circles. Nobody tell us anything. Nobody show us the door. Jesus said, I am the door. I am the truth. Nobody show us the truth. We tell everything else but about Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Look at our 17 verse. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So no Jesus Christ, no grace, no truth. You get rid of Jesus Christ, you have no truth. And we could say amen to that. We've been to many churches. Should be just one church. And we haven't seen any Bibles in many of those places. Many of those places go, they never mention Jesus Christ, the truth. He is the truth, and they never mention Jesus Christ. To get saved, you need Jesus Christ. 
To cast out the devil, you need Jesus Christ. To get healed, you need Jesus Christ. Uh, to go into heaven, you need Jesus Christ. To be baptized in water, you need Jesus Christ. To be baptized with the Holy Ghost, you need Jesus Christ. He is the truth. Look at that verse again. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Look at Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 1. Jesus, after his death, burial, and re resurrection, he spent 40 days with his disciples, giving them some instructions. After 40 days, he went back to be at the right hand. Ten days later, the Holy Ghost fell, which is Pentecost. Pentecost means 50th. So while he was here with them, they asked him a question, and he said something to them that we want to pick up on, looking at the truth. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the truth. Not a truth, the truth. Hallelujah. He said something to them, and we want to extract something here that he said to them. Now, think about the people he's saying this to. When Jesus was here, he selected 12 disciples, and they became apostles. And he gave those apostles power to raise the dead, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, and cast out devils. And these apostles whom he had chosen, when after his death, burial, and resurrection, the new bird make his entrance, he breathed in them in the upper room, but he's saying something here to them. Look at this extraction here. Acts chapter 1, get something to write with and something to write on. Look at verses 4 and 5. Acts chapter 1, look at verses 4 and 5. And see what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious words. Acts chapter 1, look at verses 4 and 5. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard of me, for John truly baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So he said, Don't leave. All that information they had to raise the dead, cast out devil on that, but don't leave until you do it power from on high. Look at verse 5. For, for John truly baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Look at something what he said to them in Big John chapter 14. And look at this spirit that he said that they're going to get. Wait, don't leave Jerusalem until they get it. Look at something here. Big John chapter 14. <clears throat> is Big John in the Bible? Yes, it is. Just want to make sure we need B-I-B. L-E. L-E. Big John chapter 14. Don't leave Jerusalem until you do with power from high. Don't leave until you get this. Stay here. These same disciples have become apostles. He gives some apostles, some prophet, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. He set them in the church, first apostle. These are the highest ministry gift. Don't leave Jerusalem until you be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now look at what he said here in Big John chapter 14. And look at the 15th verse. If you love me, keep my commandments. Didn't we see something like that before? If you abide in me, if you stay in my words, then you will be my disciples, and then you will know the truth. It seems to be saying the same thing here. Look at it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I'll pray the Father, and he'll give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Look at verse 17. Look at the 17 verse. Put your finger on the 17 verse. Look at the 17 verse. Even the spirit of truth. So don't leave until you get the spirit of truth. Look at it. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because see him not, neither know him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now back under the old covenant, three people had the spirit of God upon them. The prophet, the king, and the priest. That's it. And they had the spirit of God upon them. So when Jesus was here, there was with them. There wasn't in them. Look at what he saying in this verse here. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it's seated not neither know him. But you know him. Notice a him, a personality. Shall dwell with you, not in you, with you. And shall be future tense in you. So when you wait here, don't leave until you, you get this baptism of the Holy Ghost. He's going to be in you. Right now he's with you. But then he's going to be in you. But notice it's the spirit of truth. You will know the truth, and when you know the truth, make you free. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. I am the way, the truth. Look at those verses again. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Notice commandments have an S. 
if you love me, keep my commandments. And I'll pray the Father. If you keep his commandments, then he'll pray the Father. You see, you do that, I'll do this. You keep my commandments. And I'll pray the Father, and he'll give you another comforter, shall be abide with you forever. How long is forever? What are we talking about? It's eternal, not temporary. Eternal, look at verse 17. Even the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth. He wants you to know the truth because that's the only thing going to set you free. I am the way, the truth. When you know the truth, it's going to make you free. When you know it, the truth's been there all the time, but we didn't know it. Big John chapter 15, the next chapter over. When the spirit of truth, the third person that God had is the spirit of truth. Well, if the Father, the Word, and the Spirit are one, if the Spirit is the truth, then Jesus is the truth and the Father is the truth. God, these three agree, these three are one, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit are one. Jesus said in John 10 verse 13, the Father and I are one. So if they are one, well, the Holy Ghost is one also. So if the Holy Ghost is the truth, Jesus is the truth, and the Father is the truth, because it starts with the Father. Rank in the kingdom, the Father, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the angels, and us, the ministry gifts, then y'all. Big John chapter 15, and look at the 26 verse. Look at the 26 verse. The truth. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. If you abide in my word, you'll know the, the truth. You abide in me, and you'll know the truth. So I'm living after to it. Look at the 26 verse. When the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, even the spirit of truth, I have a relative edition. The head of the church speaking, the apostle John is recording. When the comforter has come, whom sent unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth which, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify when well, he come from the Father. See, the Father, the truth come from the Father. Jesus, I am the truth. The Father and I are one. The Holy Ghost I'll send from the Father. Spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. He is in the earth realm right now, the spirit of truth. Look at that 26 verse. But when the comforter has come, whom I'll send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father. The spirit of truth came from the Father. So the Father, Jesus, I am the truth. The spirit of truth came from the Father. And the Holy Ghost is the truth, the spirit of truth. So the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth. We want you to know the truth. There's only one truth. Not two truths, one truth. I am the way, the truth. You would know the truth, and when you know the truth, it will make you free. Big John chapter 16. Next chapter over, the truth. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. It didn't say faith come by hearing. Faith cometh. Faith cometh, E-T-H, all the time. Hear it, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth. Faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing, by the word of God. Hallelujah. He wants you to get something. He keeps saying it all the time. Every time I read things like this, you know, I, I will just meditate. I'll chew on something like this. You know, they say, if everything that Jesus Christ had done was put into books, the world itself couldn't hold the books. So here is the head of the church, the most important person for us because we have to call upon him to get saved. A lot of things that he did, they leave out of the books to leave this in the book. So this has to be important. If everything that he had done were put in the world itself couldn't hold the book, so they leave some things that Jesus Christ did to leave this in the book, so this has to be important. He wants you to know the truth. If you abide in me, you'll know the truth. And when you know the truth, you'll be free. If you don't know the truth, you're not going to be free. And all of us can say amen to that. We wasn't free before we, the truth came into our life. We were given lies. We were given lies. Big John, chapter 16, look at the 13 verse. The truth, the truth. Look at the 13 verse. How be it, when the spirit of truth is come, he'll guide you into all truth. He'll guide you into all truth. He'll guide you into all truth, no lie, all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. T-H-I-N-G-S, things to come. We have to read that again. We have to read that again, get something to write with, and something to write on the truth. Not a truth, the truth. There's only one truth. Jesus didn't say, I'm one of the truths. I am the truth. If you abide in my words, then you'll know the truth. And when you know the truth, you'll become free. The truth's been there, but we didn't know it. Nobody tell us anything about it. Can you see that? 
Big John chapter 16. This is Choice Radio 92.9 FM. Your life, your salvation, your choice. This is the Christian family in Choice Radio. Telephone number, the church, 347-533-4271. At the studio, 347-663-8638. Write these numbers down. You need them in the process of time. Big John chapter 16, look at the 13th verse again. How be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truths. All truths. This is the thing I would underline, all truths. When he come, all truths, not some truths, all truths. How be it when the spirit of truth is come, he'll guide you into all truths, for he'll not speak of himself, for whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. Notice he, he's a personality. You notice the third person who goes in a he? He. He. God is a he. Jesus is a he. The third person, God is a he. Look at that. How be it when the spirit... How be it when he, the spirit of truth, when he, the spirit of truth, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he'll guide you into all truths. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. How do you like that? Big John chapter 17. Big John chapter 17. Hallelujah, the truth. Glory to God. God is a good God, and we thank him for his holy written precious words hallelujah big john chapter 17 and look at one verse look at the 17 verse big john chapter 17 look at the 17 verse sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth thy word is is truth. Notice that thy word is a truth. Thy word is truth. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Thy word is truth. Look at that 17 verse, look at that 17 verse again. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is you see what tense you use? Present tense. Is. 2,000 years ago, is. 2,000 years later, is. 2,000 years from now, is. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thy word is truth. So if it's not his word, it's not the truth. It's something else. It's not the truth. Because he say, I am the way, the truth. If you abide in me, you would know. The truth, not a truth, the truth. Can you see that? Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is. Look at Revelation 19. Hallelujah. Get something to write with and something to write on. This is the Christian Family and Choice Radio 92.9 FM. Your life, your salvation, your choice. Hallelujah. Revelation 19. Look at the 13th verse. Thy word is truth. Revelation 19. Look at the 13th verse. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of God. Hmm. Thy word is truth. He is called the word. Amen. So if you want to get saved, you have to go through the truth. You Amen. want healing, you have to go through the truth. So healing Amen. is the truth. Salvation is truth. Amen. Deliverance is truth. That's Eternal right. life is truth. Mm -hmm. Anything else is not the truth. So when somebody's sick, that's a lie. When you're healed, that's the truth. Amen. Huh? When you're poor, that's a lie. So true. When you're rich, that's the truth. Amen to that. Yes. You see, all those are lies he was given to. You see, Satan is the father of lies. Mm -hmm. You see that? Look at that night 13 verse. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Mm -hmm. And his name is called the word of God. Amen. Let's come a little closer to home. Look at the book of Ephesians. Paul is writing this to the believers at Ephesus. Hallelujah. The truth. 
Hallelujah. The believers at Ephesus, but he's writing to us because there's only one body of Christ, whether it's in Galatia, or is Ephesus, or Colossi, or Thessalonica, or Corinth, there's only one body of Christ. So he's speaking to us. Okay, if you write a letter to those believers at Ephesus, he's writing to us. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1, look at two verses, look at 12 and 13. We're just extracting a piece of information there. The truth is the truth is the truth from Genesis to Revelation. We're just extracting a truth there. In a Ephesians chapter 1, look at 12 and 13. That you should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. Look at the 13th verse. In whom you also trusted after that you heard a word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after that you believe you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Look at that 13th verse again. In whom also you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the word of truth, the gospel, the word of truth, the gospel, the word of truth, the gospel. So the gospel and the word is the same, and both of them are the truth. Look at that 13th verse. In whom also you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after that you believe you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. But the, the, the gospel, look at, look at that 13th verse again. In whom after you trusted, afterwards you heard the word of truth. The word of truth. So when you preach the word, that word you get saved. That's the word of truth, the gospel. The word of truth, the gospel. When Philip went on to Samaria and preached Christ unto them, he preached the truth to them. Because Simon the sorcerer was in Samaria all these years. They didn't get the truth because people, nobody was saved, nobody was delivered. Because when Philip went to Samaria and preached Christ unto them, then the people get saved. Those at Jerusalem realized that those they received the word in Samaria, they sent Peter and John down that they might be filled with the Holy Ghost. So all those years, you have Simon the sorcerer there from the least to the greatest saying he's a great man of God, but they were lied to. He bewitched them with sorcery. But when Philip went to tongue and he preached the truth to them, people get saved, get delivered, blind eyes open, deaf ears on stop, crippled people walk, demons were cast out. So you see, when demons inside you, that's a lie. When you get the demon out, that's the truth. When you're not saved, that's a lie. When you get saved, that's the truth. When you're sick, that's a lie. When you get healed, that's the truth. Mm. Huh? Hallelujah. The truth, the gospel, which is the truth. When he went into Samaria, preached the truth. Look at that 13 verse. In whom after you trusted, after you heard a word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the gospel of your salvation, before we, before we, because whatever you were preaching them in Samaria was lying to them because he bewitched them with sorcery. But when Philip came to town and he preached the truth, he preached Christ unto them. People were saved. They were full of the Holy Ghost. And they were delivered. Demons were cast out. The truth. So all before they didn't have the truth, they had the lies. And all of us had the lies before. All of us thought we were doing well. We were going to what called church. Nobody reading the Bible. It wasn't even saved. I was part of a church, supposedly a Pentecostal church, over five and a half years. I wasn't even saved. I died, I was going straight to hell. And I thought I, was, thought I had it made in the shade. I feel sorry for everybody else. I thought I had it made in the shade. Going straight to hell. Going straight to hell. Not even saved. And many of you listening or they might be the same. They're going to church. You're church people. Jesus said that day, many are going to say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? We cast out devils. We've done many wonderful works. He said, depart from me. I never knew you. Without work in iniquity. I never knew this. And the revelation, they didn't say, I don't know you. I never knew you. You were lied to. You didn't have the truth. You didn't have the truth. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4. Go down to Ephesians chapter 4. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Look at verse 19. Who being time past feeling given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness, but you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have been learned him and have been taught by him as the truth is in the truth is in the truth is in that you put off the concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, that's what they get in Samaria, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We have to read that again. We have to read that again. I said we got to read that again. Can you see that? 
we got to read that again. You see, the old man was lied to all of us. We thought we were church people. I was going to church every week, carrying my Bible, never read it. You know, taught you were saved, didn't give me truth, was lied to. Was lied to. Who in time past, verse 19, feelings given themselves over to lasciviousness, to work all on cleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have been heard of him, that you've been taught by him, that the truth is in the truth is in the truth is in Jesus, that you put up concerning the former conversation, that word conversation means lifestyle or manner of life. Conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, you be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put up the put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So you have a false supposedly holiness. Because those in Samaria say from the least of the grace say that Samaria, Simon is a great man of God. So you have true holiness. So you have a false holiness. Can you see that? The book of Colossians chapter 1. The truth. Glory to God. Let's see what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious words. The truth. Hallelujah. Notice not a truth. The truth. Only one truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. Not a truth, the truth. I think the reason why some of the early church might have gotten it, because the Berean Christians, they said, they search the scriptures out daily. Well, based on what he said, he said, if you stay in my word, you abide in my word, then you would know the truth. If you stay in my word, you'll know the truth. You stay in my word, and my word say, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall know the truth. And when you know the truth, because it's been there all the time. They didn't know. It's been there, but we didn't know it. When you know it, the truth doesn't set you free. It's when you know the truth, it sets you free. Colossians chapter 1. And let's speak about verse 1. The truth. Colossians chapter 1. Let's speak about verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and the faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father for, of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have to all the saints. Look at verse 5. Look at verse 5. Put your finger on verse 5. Look at the fifth verse. Look at the fifth verse. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of truth of the gospel. The word of truth of the gospel. So the gospel and the truth and the word, all of them wrapped up together. Like the wet and the water. Look at that fifth verse. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of truth of the gospel. The word of truth of the gospel. So the gospel is the truth, and the word is the truth, and Jesus is the truth. In the beginning was the word, and the word is the truth, and Jesus is the word, and the word is with God, and the word is in us, the spirit of truth. So the truth, the truth, the truth. Spirit of truth came from the Father. Jesus is the truth. The spirit of truth is inside of us. You would know the truth when you know it. It make you free. How you like that? The truth. Glory to God. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's go to the Old Covenant. Let's go to the book of Psalms. David is given credit for writing most of the Psalms. Not all of them, but most of them. Well, whoever it is writing the Psalms is the Spirit of God behind it. Whether it's David or whoever is the Spirit of God. The Bible says, holy men of God spake because the Spirit of God was upon them. No scripture of the Bible is of any private interpretation. The Spirit of God speaking through holy men. So whether it's David or whoever it is, is the Holy Ghost really the author of this book? Amen. Psalm 31. And let's pick it about verse 1. Psalm chapter 31. And David is written here. He's given credit for writing this. We just want to extract a few verses from this psalm looking at the truth. Notice it's not a truth. The truth is only one truth. Everything else is something else. 
is not the truth. Psalm 31, look at verse 1. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thy ears to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for a house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock, my fortress. Therefore thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Verse 4, put me out of the net that they have laid privily for me. For thou art my strength. Look at the fifth verse. Look at the fifth verse. Put your finger on the fifth verse. Get something to write with and something to write on. Into thy hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. God of truth is not God of lie. The net the set for him is a lie. Deliverance is the truth. Christ had delivered us from darkness to light. Darkness is lie. Light is truth. What right have righteousness with unrighteousness? Righteousness is truth. Unrighteousness is lie. What right have light with darkness? Darkness is light. Light is truth. Children of God, children of the devil. Children of God are truth. Children of the devil are lies. Can you see that? Look at that fifth verse. Into thy hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. That's good. That bless me. While I'm cooking, I'm eating. That bless me. Look at verse 4 again. Pull me out of the net that they have set privily for me. For thou art my strength. Into thy hand I commend my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Not God of lie, God of truth. Can you see that? Look at the 100th Psalm. 100th Psalm. Just picking a few here and there. Let your fingers do the walking through the pages of the Bible. The 100th Psalm. The truth. God is still a good God and we thank him for his holy, written, precious words. 37, 37 minutes after the first hour. Hallelujah. This is Choice Radio 92.9 FM. Your life, your salvation, your choice. This is the Christian family on Choice Radio. Telephone number, the church, 347 Five three three four two seven one in the studio, three four seven six six three eight six three eight. Get something to write with, and something to write on. Glory to God. The one hundred Psalm. Hallelujah. Let's pick it up at verse one. We want to get to a lower verse. Let's pick it up at verse one. The one hundred Psalm. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, it is he that made us, and not we ourselves. For we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Look at verse 5. Look at verse 5. Put your finger on verse 5. For the Lord is God, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth. How long is his truth? If he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, well then if he was the truth yesterday, he'll be today and he'll be tomorrow. This was penned approximately, this is probably about 4,000 years ago, because Jesus was here approximately 2,000 years ago. So this is approximately that, but whether it's a million years or 10 years or whatever, it's yesterday. Look at that fifth verse again. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, his truth, truth, Endured through all generations with an S. Generations with an S. His truth endured through all generations. Can you see that? His truth endured to all generations. Look at the 119 Psalm. Psalm 119. Speaking a little bit here and a little bit there because the truth is the truth, whether it's in Genesis or Revelation. The truth is the same yesterday, today. And forever. Get something to write with and something to write on. The 119th Psalm. Look at the 142nd verse. The 119th Psalm. The 142nd verse. The truth. Hallelujah. If we can stay with the truth, we'll be all right. If we can stay with the truth we'll be very successful. Look at the 142nd verse. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is 
the truth. Thy law is the truth. Look at that, look at that verse again. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. Not a truth, the truth. We're looking at it all through that. There's only one truth. Jesus Christ. Everything else is a lie. That's right. If it's not Jesus Christ, it's a lie. Mm-hmm. I am the truth. Where the, the truth. The 142nd verse. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. Can you see that? Go down to the 151st verse. Look at the 119th Psalm, the 151st verse. And see what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious precious words. words. Hallelujah. The 119th Psalm, the 151st verse. Thou art near, O Lord, all thy commandments are truth. All of them. Up there he said, thy law is truth. Now we say thy commandment is truth. So his law and his commandment is the same. Thy law is truth. Thy commandments with an S is truth. Can you see that? Look at that, 100, look at that 151st verse again. Thou art near. How near is near? Christ in me, the hope of glory. O Lord, all thy commandments are truth. All thy commandments. In the 142nd verse, he said, Thy law is. In the 151st, he said, Thy commandment is. So the commandment is truth, and the law is truth. Can you see that? His commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's the truth. Thou shalt not make any graven image of anything that is in heaven, on the earth, under the earth. That's true. That's the second commandment. Third commandment, thou shalt take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's the truth. That's the third commandment. The fourth commandment, the Sabbath day, keep it holy. That's the truth. You say all thy commandments is truth. Fifth commandment, children obey your parents in the Lord. That's the truth. Sixth commandment, thou shalt not kill. That's the truth. So when you kill, that's a lie. Seventh commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. That's the truth. Eighth commandment, thou shalt not steal. So when you steal, that's a lie. When you don't <laughs> steal, that's the truth. Ninth commandment, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. So when you tell lies on people, well, that's a lie. You don't do it, that's the truth. Tenth commandment, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife or anything that belongs to thy neighbor's. Thy commandment, thy law, truth. I'm glad I came today while I'm cooking, I'm eating. Amen, 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 amen and amen. amen. Glory amen. to God. Hallelujah. Look at what he said here. The rich young ruler came to Jesus and he made a statement. Mark chapter 10. Hallelujah. M-A-R-K is Mark. Mark chapter 10. The rich young ruler came to Jesus. And he asked him a question. And Jesus is going to answer his question. Remember Jesus is the truth. Remember that? I am the way, the truth, not a truth, the truth. Hallelujah. The rich young ruler came to Jesus. And he asked him a question. Look at the 17 verse. And when he's gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that's God. Look at the 19th verse. Thou knowest the commandments. Thou knowest the commandment, the truth. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false with this. Defraud not. Honor thy father and thy mother. Then he answered him and unto him, Master, all these observed from my youth. <laughs> He's a good young man. He said, all these are observed for my youth. So he keep the truth, but yet he's asking, what must he do to get eternal life? Mm-hmm. Look at that 17, look at that 17 verse. 
When he was gone for the way, there came one one, kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Under the old covenant, you have to keep the commandments. You have to keep the truth. Under the new covenant, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord. When the rich man and Lazarus, he went to hell and he, he said, send him back to my father's house. He said, no, they have the law. They have the law. They have Moses and the prophet. Let them hear that. So if you want not to go into hell under the old covenant, you have to follow the law. What must I do to inherit eternal life? He said, well, keep the commandments. You keep the commandments, you know, you, you have eternal life. Well, what they had really is a promissory note. They're giving credit for being righteous. Like Abraham giving credit for being righteous. He wasn't righteous, giving credit. So when he died, everybody in the old covenant went down. So he went into Abraham's bosom. Abraham's bosom was in the upper part of hell. Those who tormented was in the lower part of hell. So you go there and you have a promissory note on salvation. When Jesus died on the cross, he went into hell after he satisfied divine justice. After three days and three nights, he defeated principality and power, making a show of them. And he tied them up and take control of the authorities of hell. He preached the gospel to those in hell. And he got them saved, all those in Abraham's bosom, not everybody, only those in Abraham, but those who had a promissory note on salvation. He preached the gospel to them and he take them on to glory, deliver them to his father. After he delivered them, he deposited his blood in the holy sanctuary of heaven, and then he come back here and spent 40 days after his disciples. After that 40 days, he went back. 10 days later, the Holy Ghost fell, which is Pentecost. And we have the new church then. So those who want to not be tormented, not to follow the law. So what must I do to inherit eternal life? Look at when he come unto him he, the way, there came one run, kneeled to him, say, Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered, Why call his me good? There's none good but one. That's God. Don't know is the commandment. If you want to hear every turn, the commandments. The commandments. Or what are the commandments? Don't know is the commandment. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear fault. Witness, defraud not honor thy father. All these observe from my good. But you see, although you're keeping the commandment, you still have another God. You see, you can have the commandment, you have another God. So Jesus, look at verse 20. 20. He answered and said unto him, All these are from my youth. Jesus beholding him, love him, and said unto him, One thing lack is thou. Man, is it a good thing for you to go before God and go so only one thing you lack? One thing lack is God, thou. Because he said, One thing lack is thou. God, I will sell whatsoever I have, give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven. Come take a red cross and follow me. And he was sad at that same, and he went away grieved, for he had great possession. And Jesus looked around and bowed them and said unto his disciples, How hard it is they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. The disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered and said unto them, Children, how hard it is that trust in riches and in the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eyes of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among them, said, well, Who then can be saved? Jesus <laughs> looked round about and said unto them, with, look at, with men it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. What had happened to this young man here? The money became his God. The money had him. He didn't have the money. Abraham had the money. Job had the money. Um, Solomon had the money. The money didn't have them. This one, the money had him. He moved Jesus off the throne and he had the money thrown. One thing lack is thou. And he wouldn't give it up for eternal life. He rather die and go to hell than give up that money. Remind him that you bring nothing into this world and you're taking nothing out of this world. So what must I do to have eternal life under the old covenant? But he had it, but he didn't have it. He, he moved the commandment of the throne and he put his money on the throne. Can you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. Look at what Matthew, Matthew chapter 22. And he says, I'm looking at the truth. I am the way, the truth. Matthew 22. I still have a religious edition. Head of the church speaking, the apostle Matthew is recording. The truth. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 22. And in the days of Jesus Christ, there was two major religious organizations, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And both of them are something else, or was something else. The Sadducees don't believe in the resurrection. They don't believe in angels and they don't believe in spirits. Well, Somebody said, well, that was way back then, 2,000 years ago. No, same thing today. Yeah. That which was, is that which is, that which shall be done, is that which is done, and nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. Same old, same old, and nothing new under the sun. That which was that. Here they don't believe in angels, they don't believe in spirits, 
and they don't believe in the resurrection. Well, they have churches that don't believe in Jesus Christ. They believe Buddha is God, they believe Hare Krishna is God, they believe Muhammad is God, they don't believe Jesus Christ is Lord. So there's nothing changed, that which was is that which is, that which shall be done, that which there's nothing new under the sun. Well, if you don't believe in spirit, God is a spirit. So if you do believe, here's a church, don't believe in spirit. That's the Sadducees. They don't believe in the resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. And not new people, they don't believe that Jesus Christ is who we say he is. Who do men say that I am? Some say Jeremiah, John the Baptist, or Elijah, one of the prophets. <laughs> That's who you are, just like one of them. He asked them, who do you say that I am? Well, they say that you, Peter said, you are the Christ. He said, who told you? I didn't tell you that. The Spirit of God revealed that to you. The Spirit of God revealed that to you. Who do you say that I am? Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, I didn't tell you that. You see, who do men say that I am? Who do those folks say I am? You see, so that's back in his day. I had nothing changed today. Still people think that Jesus is just another person, another prophet. He's much more than that. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the ending. He's the everlasting God. Amen, amen, and amen. So that's what the Sadducees believe. The Pharisees, Jesus said about them, they're of the devil. So they don't believe that. He said they're of the devil. Had a conversation with them in John 8 and verse 44. He said, you're of your father, the devil. That's the Pharisees he's talking about. So pick your poison. Six or one and a half a dozen or the other. Now here in Matthew chapter 22, we pick up something here in Matthew chapter 22. Look at the 34th verse. Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 22, sorry. Matthew 22, get something to write, with something to write on, and look at verse 34. And when the Pharisee heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they gathered together. And one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Look at verse 39. The second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbors and thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet. Which is the great commandment? Look at what they ask in verse 36. The master. Look at, look at verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Which is the great? Well, he said, thy commandment is true. Thy law is true. Jesus answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Mm. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet. How you like that? On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the truth, the truth. I am the way, the truth. Not a truth, the truth. Only one truth, Jesus Christ. Look at those verses again. Look at those verses again. <clears throat> Look at those verses. Now remember the two major religious organizations today, the Pharisee and the Sadducee. Two major ones. And he said, my law is truth, my commandment is truth. The tense, I like the tense. Always truth. A hundred years from now still is truth. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. It always be the truth. Never change. Malachi 3 and verse 6, I am the Lord that change it not. Never change it. I'm the same all the time. People will change, time will change, things will change. I wouldn't change. I'm the same. And that, that's comforting to know that if he never changed, every time we go to him in prayer and we approach him the right way, the way he said to come, He'll always there. We have access to the throne, come boldly to the throne, because he's the truth, he cannot lie. Mm -hmm. He's the same yesterday, and that, that's comforting to know whether you're in the Caribbean, whether you're in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, any parts of the Americas, anywhere you are, that he's the that, that's To me, that's so comforting. You're on a cruise, you're in an airplane, wherever you are, he's the truth. He say, I'll never leave you, and forsake you, I'm there. He's the truth. And uh, that's to me, I don't know, some people look at that, but that's that comforting, wherever I go. I know he's there with me, promise never to leave me. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now that is something. When we as Christian, informed Christian, 
who know the truth. We should never have a down day. Mm -hmm. That world go up and down like a thermostat, like a thermometer. We like mm -hmm. we thermostat. We set the temperature for the world. The thermometers they go up and down. Things go good, they up. Things go bad, they down. Up and down like the stock market, up and down. But we set the temperature for the rest of the world. That's what he wants us to be. Not as thermometer, but as thermostat. Set the temperature for the rest of the world. We are the light of the world. We are salt. We prevent decay. We are that. Look at that 34th verse. And when the Pharisees heard that he had put the side to the silence, they gathered together. And one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Which is the great one? Well, the great one, he tell him what the great one is. It's a great commandment in the law. Jesus answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. This is the first and great commandment. That's the truth. That's the truth. First and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Who's your neighbor? Remember we have a set of tape and file? Your neighbor. Who is the neighbor? Let's see who's the neighbor. Look at the book of Luke. Who's your neighbor? Love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, who's my neighbor? I don't know. Well, let's find out who's your neighbor. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Who's your neighbor? <clears throat> Glory to God. Who's your neighbor? Look at Luke chapter 10. Let's just start out this segment with it. Now, this is something, I don't know, you know, sometimes you could stay and chew on this for a little while. That love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And these two commandments, two greatest things, I mean, there's nothing greater than that. I mean, if we could just get that inside of us, not up here, but in here. Amen. You love your neighbor as yourself. You love Amen the Lord with all that. your heart, yes. your soul, your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these hang all the commandments, all that you're reading from Genesis to Revelation, everything is wrapped up in that. If you can love the Lord, I go with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. On these two wrap, all everything is wrapped up inside of there. Oh, who are your neighbors? Luke chapter 10. <clears throat> and let's pick it up at verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, what is written in the law? How readest thou? He answered and said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, all thy strength, and all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. This is, this is Luke, and your neighbor as yourself. And look at verse 28. And he said unto him, Thou was answered right, This do, and thou shalt live. So if you want to live under the God, you love the Lord and love your neighbor, and you live. Man, I, I don't think I don't I think I don't think you're hearing with your inner ear. Love no, your neighbor himself. Oh, but verse no. 29. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, Who is thy main neighbor? Jesus answered and said to him, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him and departed, leaving him for dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. Likewise, a Levi, when he passed that place, he came and looked at him and passed on the other side. Everybody passing on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as his journey came near the way he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. The other two didn't have compassion. Compassion will do something. He had compassion on him. And he went with him and bunged him up, poured oil and, and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. Who is your neighbor? Verse 35. And on tomorrow, as he departed, he took two pence and gave it to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever spend it more, when I come again, I'll repay thee. And when, and he asked him, Now, which of these three thinkest thou is neighbor to him that fell among thieves? And he said, He that show mercy, you know, mercy and compassion is the same thing, mercy, pity, and compassion is the same thing, mercy in him. Then Jesus said unto him, Go do likewise. Go do likewise. The Levi pass and the other way. The priest pass at some way. A good Samaritan pass, take care of him, take him his in, pour oil, or put him on his beast, take him to the inn, pay for him. He said, which of these three is his neighbor? Yes. Yeah, you have your answer. Go do likewise. Go do likewise. He take care of him. And that, that is something for a stranger, a complete stranger. I think, I think our ministry is based on that. 
complete stranger. Uh, a certain Samaritan journey as he came that way, when he saw him, he had compassion on him. You see, they saw him, but they didn't have compassion. The Samaritans saw him, they didn't have compassion. And when you look at the Samaritans, they're outsiders, they're kind of half, half breed Jews, they're kind of distant cousins, the Samaritans. But the Levi are the church people. The priests are the church people. That's the church for you. And the church is busy doing something else. Not taking care of business. But the Samaritan, not church people, he had compassion. They got it. And a certain Samaritan journey as he came and where he was, when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and wung him up, pouring oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on tomorrow when he departed, he took two pence and gave it to the host. You see, he's not him a priest. He's not him a Levi. Look at that. And said unto him, take care of him. And whatsoever spend it more, when I come again, I'll repay thee. I mean, he has good credit. Take care of him. If anything, I'll pay you. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor to him that fell among thieves? And said unto him, he that show mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, go and do likewise. He's saying that to you also. Go do likewise. Can you see that? The truth. The truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is still a good God. Hallelujah. Part two. One minute after the second hour. And look at part two. Let's look at the book of Romans. Chapter three. Is Romans in the Bible? Yes, it is. Glory to God. Romans. Chapter three. Get something to write with. And something to write on. Romans chapter 3. And look at the fourth verse. Put your finger on the fourth verse. Romans chapter 3. Look at the fourth verse. God forbid. Yeah, let God be true. But every man... A what? Liar. Every man a liar. Every man a liar, as it is written, thou mightest be justified in thy saying, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But that's not the part we want to look at. God forbid, yea, let God be true. So if you're not God, you're not true. If you're a man, you're a liar. Who do men say that I am? Some say Jeremiah, Elijah. John the Baptist, or one who do you say that I am? You're the Christ. I didn't say that to you. God said that to you. The truth said that to you. You see, let God be true, but every man a liar. So if you're not God, you're a liar. Can you see that? If you're not God, he said, let every man be a liar. Let only God be true. I am the way, the truth. Hallelujah. Well, what had happened over the years, we have confused facts with the truth. Well, facts is facts, the truth is true, only one truth. All that other information you have, that's, those might be facts, but not the truth. Look at 1 John chapter 2. What are facts? Well, we'll see that in a little while. What is facts? And what the truth is, but I'm here to let you know the facts never change anything. The truth will set you free, not the facts. The truth will bring you back to life, not facts. The truth will open blind eyes, not facts. The truth will make the cripple walk, not facts. Look at, B, look at little John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Look at 1st John. <clears throat> and look at what he's writing here. John, the Apostle John writing this, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Look at 1st John, chapter 2. And see what God is saying to us there. Look at chapter 2, look at verse 20 and 21. And let's go to uh, verse 22 also. Look at that, 1st John, chapter 2. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. Remember he said, when the spirit of truth come, he'll teach you into all king. Well, that unction is the Holy Ghost inside of you. 
You have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it. And no lies of the truth. And no lies of the truth. Let God be true, but every man a liar. No lies of the truth. Look at verse 22. Who is a liar? But he that denied that Jesus is the Christ, he is the Antichrist, and he denied the Father and the Son. If you deny the Father, you deny the Son. If you deny the Son, you deny the Father. People say, well, I don't want Jesus, all I want is the Father. No such things. It's like the wet and the water. If you get the Father, you have to take Jesus. If you take Jesus, you have to take the Father. Can't get one without the other. It doesn't work like that. Father and I are one. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit are one. Look at those verses again. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written on you because you know not the truth, but because you know it. And no lies of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denied that Jesus is the Christ, he is the Antichrist. So the Antichrist is a liar. He is against Christ. He is against the truth. He is a liar. And he denied the Father and the Son. If you deny the Father, you deny the Son. If you deny the Son, you deny the Son. So people out there who don't believe in Jesus Christ, they're liars. Because you can't go to the Father without Jesus Christ. No man come unto the Father but by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. You cannot go to the Father without Jesus Christ. Can't say, I take the Father and don't want the Son. No. Just take the Son without the Father. You take it. Well, it's a package deal. Wet in the water. Must have. Look at those verses again. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and no lies of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denied that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist, and denied the Father, and hate the Son. Can you see that? Glory to God. Big John chapter 8. Big John chapter 8. And let's see what God is saying to us. The facts. What are facts? Things that are actually happen. A state of things as they are. Something said to have occurred. Reality or actuality. Facts. That's not the truth. I am the way, the truth. Big John chapter 8. And look at one verse. Big John chapter 8. Look at the verse 44. Big John chapter 8. Look at verse 44. Speak the truth. Subtitle the facts. Look at verse 44. For you are of your father the devil... And the lust of your father you'll do. He's a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he's a liar and the father of it. He's the father of lies. So, all of us, before we were born again, we were under the control of Satan. When Adam sinned in the garden, everybody died spiritually. We were taken from light to darkness. When God created man in the beginning, Adam, he put him in light. When he sinned, we moved from light to darkness. Until the last Adam came, those of us who receive him as Lord and Savior, we deal from darkness to light. So, if you're not born again, Satan is your spiritual father, and you're a liar. Can you read? If you're not born again, Satan is your spiritual father. Somebody said, well, I, I, Satan is not my father and God is not my father. I'm just here in the middle. No such thing. you either light or darkness. If you're not born again, Satan is your spiritual father. If you're born again, God is your spiritual father. Everybody has two fathers. So Jesus, according to the flesh, is the son of David. According to the spirit, he's the son of God. So the sons of Eli are the sons of Belial. Eli is the physical father, but Belial, the nomenclature for Satan, is the spiritual father. Everybody has two fathers, spirit and flesh father. So you are of the devil. If you're not born again, he's your father. Look at verse 44. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you'll do. He's a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. There's no truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. There's no truth in him. I am the truth. I am the truth. Thy law is true. Thy commandment is truth. There's no truth in him. There's none. So if you're not born again, he's your father and there's no truth in you. Your lie. 
Can you read? How readest thou? You have your father the devil, and the lust of your father you'll do. He is a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and a father of it. So all of us, when we were not born again, Satan was our spiritual father. All of us was a lie too. We were told there was no God. We were told there was no hell. There is no heaven. We were told when you die, that's the end of it. That's it. That's a lie. You'd never die. You live for a hundred million years. You'll never die. Your body have a shelf life. The inward man is renewed day by day, but the outward man is perishing day by day. You're getting older by the day. That's the body. It's appointed unto man who wants to die. After that, the judgment. The body going to die, but the spirit will never die. If you're not born again, if you was only born once from your mother womb, you were never born again, you're going to die twice. You're going to die physically, and you were dead spiritually. You're going into hell, and you're going to wait to experience the second death, which is the lake of fire. You're going to experience three deaths. Spiritual death, physical death, and the second death. Those of us who were born twice, we're going to die once. It's appointed unto man once to die. He only wants us to die once. Because we were born from our mother womb, then we were born again. So we were born twice, we're going to die once. To be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. If you're not born again, you have a, a road ahead of you that you don't want to think about. Somebody lied to you and tell you, the hell, there's no such thing as hell. When you die, that's the end of it. No, you will never die. Spirits are eternal beings. When you go to the lake of fire, you're going to be there for all eternity. When you arrive in hell, you're not coming back. That's it. Look at it, they lie to you. You're following the fathers of lies. Look at it, John 8 and verse 44. You have your father the devil, and the lust of your father you'll do. He's a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there's no truth in him. There's no truth in There's no Jesus in him. Jesus is the truth. There's no Jesus in him. There's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he's a liar and the father of lies. So we've gone to church all these years. We thought we were all right. We thought we were safe. We were going straight to hell. A one-way ticket going straight to hell. Hallelujah. Look at something in the book of Matthew chapter 8. Facts. Matthew chapter 8. The truth. Subtitle facts. Things that are actually happen. Facts. A state of things as they are. Facts. Something said to have occurred, facts, reality, actuality, facts. That's not the truth. Look at this. Matthew chapter 8. Look at verses 1 and 2. Look at those 1 and 2. Matthew chapter 8. Look at verses 1 and 2. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. You see, what he have there, that's the fact. He's a leper, he has leprosy. But you notice, he would need the truth to change that condition. Ah, uh, he come with facts, but facts ain't changing nothing. He would need the truth to change that. He would need the truth. Let's read that again. When he was coming up from the mountain, great multitudes follow him. And behold, there came a leper... Yeah, that's a fact. He have leprosy. He's a leper. And worship him saying, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. He's a leper, he has leprosy, that's a fact. But he's going to need the truth. You would know the truth. You would know the truth. And the truth will make you free when you know it. You see, Naaman live all the way in Syria. He was a leper, had leprosy, leave all the way to come to Israel to get cleansed. Why? They didn't have the truth in Syria. When he came, he said, go dip seven times in the Jordan. He said, why I came from a better river than this old dirty Jordan River you people have here? Why I come from, we have Fafa and Abana. Why did you dip in Fafa and Abana? Where you come here for? Yeah, you go to the Jordan, you dip seven times in our dirty Jordan River, and you're going to get it. Yeah, he has the truth. A little maid in his house working with Mrs. Naaman say, if he was in Israel, there's a prophet who can take care of him. That prophet have the truth, has a healing ministry. Look at the distance from Syria to Israel. Think about transportation 4,000 years ago, what it was like. 
but he didn't have the truth. He had facts, but he didn't have the truth. He had a great multitude, yeah, but he don't have the truth. He has facts. Look at it. And he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes for him, and behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Let's leave it right there. He has facts. Yeah? Things that actually happen. <laughs> you get, he has leprosy. He is a leper. The state of things as they are. Facts. Look at the next one. Go all Lord on. Hallelujah. Look at verses 5 and 6. At that same chapter. Look at verses 5 and 6. Look at those verses. When Jesus entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion and beseeched him, saying, Lord, my servant lied at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Facts. Facts. That's not the truth. I, by his stripes you were healed. He has facts. Let me read those two verses again. When Jesus entered the Capernaum, they came, a son of him, saying, Lord, my servant lied at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Things that are actually happen, a state of all things as they are, something said to have occurred, reality or actuality. Facts. He going to need the truth. He going to need the truth. <laughs> yes, facts. Facts ain't changing nothing. What must I do to be saved? Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> He's not saved. He going to need the truth. He going to need the truth. Hallelujah. Go down in that same verse. Look at the 14 verse. Look at the 14 verse of that same chapter. Look at the 14 verse of that same chapter. 14 verse of that same chapter. And when Jesus was coming to the house, he saw his wife's mother lay sick of a fever. Yeah. She's going to need the truth. Yeah, she has a fever. That's a fact. Not the That's not the truth. She's going to need the truth to change that condition. Uh, look at that 14 verse. When Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lay sick of a fever. That's a fact. A thing that actually happened, a state of all things as they are, something said to have occurred, reality or actuality, but that's not the truth, that's a lie. Let God be true, but every man a liar. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. My word is truth. My law is truth. My commandment is te present tense. Can you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. Glad I come tonight while I'm cooking, I'm eating. You're going to need the truth. When you know the truth, you're going to be free. You see, somebody tell him, about, tell him about the truth. He came. Great multitude. He came. Yeah, the facts come to meet the truth. Facts come to meet the truth. Yeah, facts doesn't have the truth. You will stay with that facts. You'll go straight to hell with facts. You would stay sick all the days of your life with facts. Ah, pressure is high. Yeah, that's a fact. But that's not the truth. Amen. Matthew 9, look at verse 27. Facts. Look at verse 27. When Jesus departed, then two blind men followed him, crying, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. He said unto them, Believe you that I am able to do this? Say, yes, Lord, they have all that facts, but they're going to need the truth to change that. For him to get his sight back, he's going to need the truth. To cleanse the leper, you're going to need the truth. To cast the devil out, you're going to need the truth. To get saved, you're going to need the truth. To be baptized in the Holy Ghost, you're going to need the truth. To be baptized in water, you're going to need the truth. Amen. Look at those verses again. And when Jesus departed, then two blind men followed him. Blind men, yeah, that's, that's a fact. <laughs> that's not the truth. When God created and began, everything he made was very good. God didn't make anything bad. Everything he made was very good. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Reality, actuality. That's not the truth. That's facts. 
Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 12, you're going to need the truth to change that. And all of us are going through our life all the time, poor, broke, sick, and all. I'm just a miserable, lonely self. You didn't have the truth. You would know the truth when you know the truth. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. And you're going to get whatever you say. Because you tap into a spiritual law. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast in the sea. And not doubt in his heart, but believe the things which he say shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he say. He shall have whatsoever he say. Speak the truth. Yeah, they have facts. But they'll die with facts. Amen. Matthew chapter 12. Look at verses 9 and 10. And when he departed thence, he went into their synagogue, and behold, there was a man which, which hand was withered. And he asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him? He yes, said, He has a withered hand. That's a fact. He's going to need the truth to restore that hand. We're not dealing with the truth tonight. We're dealing with facts here. This subtitle and this part two is facts. Speak the truth. To get out of any situation, all the mess we were in, we had to get the truth. To get healed, to get delivered, to get husband, to get wife, to get money. Truth. You need the truth. You need the truth. I am the way, the truth. You will know the truth. When you know it, you'll be free. You don't know the truth, you're going to be at a disadvantage. You're going to be at a disadvantage. My people are destroyed for a lack of truth. No truth. All of us. Sick, unnecessary, poor, unnecessary, lonely, unnecessary, go to un un because you didn't know the truth. And the churches that are supposed to give us the truth, they themselves didn't have it. Many years ago, this man took a survey, a religious organization, not a man, a religious, a, a religious organization, take this survey across the country. And they survey all the churches. Well, you know, when I take a survey, they don't you know, have to sample it, how they do these surveys. And they discover that over more than 40% of the pastors are not even saved. And I will go along with that. I'll say amen to that. I'll say amen to that. Not even say. But when the blind lead the blind, how many go find it? If you don't know, how are you going to lead somebody to Christ? How are you going to lead somebody to Christ? An evangelist came to town here to have a crusade some years ago. <laughs> so it's funny. And, you know, he setting up the crusade here. So he walking down the street and going to the post office to mail some mails back to his home office. And he see a young man in the street and ask him where the post office is. He said, well, go down two blocks and make a left. You find the post office. He said, I want to invite you to the crusade tonight. Come by. He said, why should I come? He said, I'll tell you how to get to heaven. He said, you don't know how to get to the post office. How are you going to tell me how to get to heaven? <laughs> you don't know the post office. You will tell me how to get there. He said, I'm not coming. You don't know where the post office is at. You, will tell, you want to invite me to go to heaven. Where's the, you don't know where the post office is at. I'm not coming. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You don't know where the post office is. You going to lead me to heaven. But you don't know where the post office is at. He said, I'm not coming. Amen. So look at those verses again, verse 9 and 10. And when he was departed thence, he went into the synagogue, and behold, there was a man which, had, which hand was withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him? You see, that's facts. But that's not the truth. You will stay without facts. You will stay with your hand withered without the truth. You need the truth. You need the truth. When we know some stuff, you don't get me wrong, we have a billion things to learn. We're learning all the time. But brother, when I find out some stuff and I say, my goodness, we could do all this stuff. Didn't know it. And the churches you go to, they themselves didn't know. Blind lead the blind. When you know the truth, you would know the truth. When you know the truth, the truth's been there all the time. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. It's been there. We didn't know it. You would know the truth. And when you know the truth, it will set you free. Amen, amen, and amen. Look at this Mark, M-A-R-K, Mark. Chapter 5. You could have all the facts you want and you go straight to hell with facts. You'll stay sick all the days with facts. Mark chapter 5. God is a good God. We thank him for his holy, written, precious word. Speak the truth. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 5. And look at this woman with the issue of blood. Pick it up at verse 25. Verse 25. Mark chapter 5. Look at verse 25. Get something to write with and something to write on. This is the Christian Family and Choice Radio 92.9 FM. Your life, your salvation, your choice. 
Telephone number the church, 347-533-4271. The studio, 347-663-8638. Get something to write with and something to write on. Glory to God. Look at this, Mark chapter 5. Let's pick it up at verse 25. Mark chapter 5. And look at verse 25. A certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, that's a fact. Look at the next verse 26. And had suffered many things of many physicians, spent all that she had, was nothing better but rather worse. So all the physicians, everywhere she spent, money couldn't care because they spent all that she had. So money couldn't solve it. We know a lot of people have a lot of money and they're still sick. A lot of people have a lot of money, they're still lonely. They don't know the truth. Look at, look at those two verses again. A certain woman had an issue of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians, spent all that she had, but was nothing better but rather worse. Facts. Money couldn't do it. All the physicians couldn't do it. She needed truth. She needed the truth. Only thing could solve that problem is the truth. And sometimes, man in his quest to leave God out of his business, he's trying to solve spiritual problem by natural means. She spent all that she had, been to physician everywhere. The concern, she needed the truth. She needed the truth. We're going to deal with the truth in the next segment, not this one. We look at the facts here. But notice she have all this Informate all that she's been to doctors everywhere. So somebody tell her about one doctor, two doctors, three doctors, four doctors. Been everywhere. Spent all the money. Empty her bank account. Money couldn't solve it. The doctors couldn't solve it. She needed the truth. She needed the truth. Many people come to the ministry. They've been all to all these programs. None of them could solve it. Because the program doesn't have the truth. It doesn't have the truth. And God give us the truth. So the truth make them free. The truth when they know it. A certain woman had an issue of blood 12 years and suffered many things of many physicians and spent all that she had, nothing better but rather worse. When she heard of Jesus, she heard of the truth. She heard of Jesus, she heard the truth. Yeah, she heard of Jesus, she heard the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. And we have a lot of facts, but still they have nothing working. Business and working, health and working, wife and working, children and working, nothing working. Living in a house but lonely. <laughs> Working two jobs, but still have no money. Drinking water, still thirsty. Eating food, but still hungry. Putting your money in a bag with holes. Nothing working. Because why? You don't have the truth. She spent the money all that she had. Nothing better, but rather worse. Been to doctors everywhere. They couldn't solve the problem. She need the truth. She need the truth. Look at Luke chapter 13. Facts. Luke chapter 13. Is Luke in the Bible? Yes, it is. Just want to make sure when the B-I-B. L-E. L-E. Luke chapter 13. <clears throat> Glory to God. Luke chapter 13. And look at two verses. Look at 10 and 11. Glory to God. 10 and 11. Look at those two verses. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself up. That's a fact. A thing that actually happened, a state of things as they are, something said to have occurred, reality. These are some of the meanings. This is not all. We're just using these meanings for this teaching. Facts. Yeah, she have facts, but she need the truth to set her free. And how many people you know have facts? They know the pressure is high. They know what it is. They know all the kind of things. They know the pocket is empty. Those are, those are facts. That's not the truth. You don't feel well. That's facts. That's not the truth. Everything God made was very good. Look at those two verses. And he was teaching one on the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself up. That's facts. That's not the truth. When she meet the truth, she's set free. Can you see that? She need the truth. And every one of you that are listening out there, that are viewing through the internet or on radio, or listening on radio, you need the truth. To get you out of that mess you're in, you need the truth. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall know the truth. And when you know the truth, the truth's been there, but we didn't know it. 
Nobody put an interp. Nobody. I'm going to say interpreter. You need an interpreter. But let's not go wrong there. That's the whole. The teaching by itself, the interpreter. Hallelujah. So look at those verses. The teaching one in synagogue. Now notice he's in church, <laughs> but the church doesn't have the truth. One of the synagogues. That's the church. Amen. Huh? And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and could bow herself again. Could he no wise lift herself up? That's a fact. Big John chapter 5. Next time you go look at the truth, how the truth change that from facts to truth. Facts looking for the truth. We want to introduce the facts to the truth. We want to introduce the facts to the truth. Have facts but no truth. Big John chapter 5. And let's see what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious word, 30 minutes after the second hour. Get something to write with and something to write on. This is Choice Radio 92.9 FM, your life, your salvation, your choice. This is the Christian family on Choice Radio. Telephone number, the church, 347-533-4271. In the studio, 347-663-8638. Get something to write with and something to write on. Big John chapter 5, facts never change anything. You need the truth. Big John chapter 5, you need facts to get you to the truth. <laughs> Big John chapter 5, look at verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And there was a Jerusalem at the sheep market, a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folks, blind, halt, withered, waiting for the movement of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water, and whosoever first after the troubling of the water was stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had. And a certain man had an infirmity 38 years. <laughs> That's facts. He needed the truth. He needed the truth. You ever wonder why Jesus went there? Here is Jesus, compassion and Jude forever. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You ever wonder why he went to the pool? There's a great multitude there, but you only minister to one person. You ever ask yourself that question? There's a great... Let's look at, look at that one more time. Let's look at, look at verse 3. In these lay a great multitude of impotent... Great, you know how much is the multitude? Thousands. We know when he feed with the five loaves and two fishes, he say 5,000 plus women and children. So we could, we could easily say 10,000. Plus women and children, because women and children, most of the women, you know, had more than one child of children. Because when you look at Jesus' family, Jesus came from a family of at least seven, at least. Because he had four brothers, and they say sisters, they didn't say how many sisters. So two sisters, well, let's just say two, they didn't say how many, but they say sisters. So that's six plus Jesus, seven. So they say so they say a multitude here, look at this, in that they let a great multitude of folks, blind, halt, withered, waiting for the movement of water. An angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water, and whosoever first after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made hold of whatsoever disease he had. A certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. So Jesus just ministered that one man. We're not getting to that part of it yet, but look at a great multitude, she ministered the one man. But 38 years, he didn't me the truth and our job is to introduce you to the truth you have a lot of facts but no truth you see a woman have an issue blood for 12 years she need the truth went to doctors everywhere spend all she have facts no truth woman the spirit of infirmity for 30 and for 18 years fact no truth huh 30 and 8 years until he meet the truth, you'll need the truth to change that situation. That mess you, you're going to need the truth. You would know the truth, and when you know the truth, he'd make you free. How you like that? Look at something here in Matthew chapter 4, and let's try to wind it down. Looking for a place to learn. Amen, amen, and amen. When Jesus started this public ministry, look at something here. Hallelujah. The truth. Facts. A thing that actually happened. A state of things as they are. Something said to have occurred. 
reality or actuality. That's some of the meanings for this teaching. That's not all the meaning for this teaching. When Jesus had his public ministry, Matthew chapter 4, look at the 23rd verse. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Jesus went all about Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria and the border, and all sick people were taken with diverse diseases and torment, those that were possessed, those that were lunatic, those that were palsy, and he healed them. And they followed him, great multitude of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan. Now, when Jesus started his public ministry, he is the truth. And the truth deal with the entire man, spirit, soul, and body. Uh, look at verse 24. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought on him all sick people. Well, why didn't they take them to a doctor? Why didn't they take them someplace else? Here's a woman who had issue about 12 years, been to doctors everywhere, couldn't solve it. She needed the truth. A woman with a spirit of infirmity for 18 years, she needed the truth. Man had pulled up a test for 38 years, he needed the truth. When Jesus tied his public ministry, look at it, his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought on them all sick people are taken with diverse diseases, those that were torment. Those uh, disease and uh, torment, and those that were possessed with the devils, those that were lunatic, and those that were palsy. So those that were possessed have to do with the spirit, lunatic have to do with the mind, and palsy have to do with the body. So Jesus wants you completely whole all through, whether it's spiritual, whether the evil spirit could get into your spirit, whether it could mess up your mind or to put sickness or disease on your body. So he wants you to heal all through. So the truth. One, two, three. So anything that's wrong with you, spiritually, try to get into the possession, take you over, that's a lie. Anything that's wrong with you, mentally, that's a lie. Anything that's wrong with you, physically, that's a lie. Because, look at it, let's go back to 23. Jesus went all about Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel, of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and all manner. So any manner of sickness or any manner of sickness, that's a lie. Any manner of sickness, that's a lie because I am the truth. I am the truth. My word is truth. Look at verse 24. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought on them all sick people that taken with diverse disease and torment. Those that were possessed, number one. Those that were lunatic, number two. And those that were palsy, number three. And he healed them. So everything, so anything that's wrong with you spiritually, mentally, or physically, that's a lie. Because Jesus said, I am the truth. He didn't say, I am a truth. I am the truth. Look at 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, look at one verse, look at verse 23, look at the 23rd verse. First Thessalonians chapter 5, and look at verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God wants your whole spirit, soul, and body. So anybody trying to mess with your spirit, that's a lie. Mess with your soul, that's a lie. Mess with your body, that's a lie. So sickness and disease are lies. Look at it. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly, that your whole spirit wants you complete. Soul and body be preserved blameless. Unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Mark 5. And look at the truth. <clears throat> Mark chapter 5. And look at the truth. Look at those that were possessed. Anybody that possessed, that's a lie. That's not the truth. He wants your whole spirit, soul, and body. Anything that tried to mess with anything, that is sickness and disease, that's a lie. 
That's of the devil. Mark chapter 5. And let's pick it about verse 1. Just want to pick a part of the story. Mark chapter 5, and let's pick it up at verse 1. And they came over on the other side of the sea, unto the country of the gathering. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately met him out of the tomb, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no not with chains, because that often been bound with feathers and with chains, and the chain had been plucked asunder by him, and the feathers been broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Always night and day he was in the mountain and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stone. When he saw Jesus afar, he ran and worshipped him, and he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not? For he said unto him, Come unto the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, Say, My name is Legion, for we are many. And besought him not that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was near unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding. All the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine to be entered into them. Fought with Jesus, gave them leaves, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swines, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea, and there were about two thousand a choke in the sea. And they that fed them fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what was done. Verse 15, And when he was come to Jesus, see him that was possessed with the devil. They see him that was possessed with the devil. You see, so Jesus asked the devil to come out of his spirit, possessed have to do with the spirit. So he doesn't want any spirit. So any spirit in that's a lie. You need the truth to get an evil spirit out of there. If you're a lie, you can't get him out of there. Remember in the 19th chapter of the book of Acts, the seven sons of one skiver, they want to cast out the devil. You could adjure you by who Paul preached. The evil spirit said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. You see, Jesus is the truth. And Paul working for Jesus. He's his apostle. He said, Jesus I know. And Paul I know. But who are you? You see, you're not the truth. And the evil spirit leaped him out, jumped out in man, leap on them and beat them up and fled out of the house naked and wounded. You see, they're not the truth. They can't cast the devil. But to get out the devil from there, you need the truth. You say, come on, look at verse 15. And when Jesus would come and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed on his right mind and they were afraid. Isn't that something? When he, wasn't, when he was in his right mind, he wasn't afraid. Now he's in his right mind, they're afraid. Verse 16. And when and told it and how would befell him, him that was possessed with the devil and concerning the swine. So it possess have to do. So Jesus have to take it out. So you need Jesus to deal with the spirit. He went about healing all manner of diseases, all manner of sickness, those that were possessed, those that were lunatic, those that were palsy. Look at Matthew 17. Have a few minutes to go. Let's use it wisely. 42 minutes after the second hour. Matthew chapter 17. Get something to write with and something to write on. You need the truth to get him out of your spirit. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. We see a lot of facts, but no truth. You need the facts. You need the truth to deal with the facts. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 17, look at verse 14. Pick up at verse 14. Hallelujah. Matthew verse chapter 17, pick up at verse 14. And when it's come unto the multitude, there came a certain man kneeled to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he's a lunatic, and sword vexed. Often time he fall into fire and into water, and they brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. And Jesus answers, the old faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him, bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured the very order. So this is one have to do, lunatic have to do with the mind. Mm -hmm. But notice you need the truth to deal with mental diseases can you see that so you need the truth to deal with possess have to do with the spirit you need the truth to deal with mental diseases we can look at read that again look at verse 14 and when they were come out to the multitude there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying lord have mercy on my son for he's a lunatic and sword vex often time fall into the fire and often into water i besought thy disciple that but they could not cure him uh, and Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I suffer you? Bring him, how long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he part out, and the child was cared the very hour. How you like that? So we see to deal with the spirit, you need the truth. To deal with the mind, you need the truth. Look at one more. Look at Mark, M A R K, Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. And see what God is saying to us in his holy, written. Precious word, the truth, facts. 
You need the truth. Mark chapter 2. And let's pick it up at verse 1. Mark chapter 2, verse 1. Get something to write with and something to write on. Mark chapter 2, verse 1. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days and was noise that he was in the house. And straightway there were many gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no not about the door. And he preached the word unto them. He preached the word unto them. Is the word the truth? Is the word the truth? Is the word the truth? He preached the word unto them. And they come unto him bringing one sick of the palsy, underline palsy, was born of four. And they could not come near unto him for the press, but uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick of palsy, Son, thy sin be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there, reason within their heart, Why do this man do speak blasphemy? Who can do sin but God only? And immediately Jesus, perceiving his spirit, that they saw reason within themselves, he said unto them, why do you reason these things in your heart? What is it easier to say to the sick of palsy, thy sin be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man have power to, on earth to forgive sins, he said unto the sick of palsy, I said unto the Arise, take up thy bed and go into thy house. And immediately he arose and took up his bed and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never saw it on this fashion. How you like that? So the deal with spirit, soul, body, you need the truth. How you like that? Glory to God. While I was cooking, I was eating. I, had my, I get some new facet of revelation. Although I was teaching it, I was getting new facets of revelation. I was cooking, I was eating. Wonderful thing. I, I, I just had myself a good time tonight. I feed my spirit and I'm filled spiritually. What do you think about that, my dear? The truth and facts. Everybody, you see, when we look at the next segment, we look at how the truth gets into facts and change things, but that's the next segment. Hallelujah. You know, when you was talking about, when we do the first one, you know, about the truth also, but when you was talking about in um, Luke chapter 10 and verse um, 27, mm -hmm. when he tell us that um, about the love part, yeah. you know, about love thy neighbor. Right as thyself but mm. a lot of times people can't even love their neighbors because they don't love their, themselves so how can you give love to someone else if you don't have love mm. and when you said that i was like wow i wanted to say something right then but i said let me just wait because what happened is, is that most people have never even received love before mm. and and when you don't receive something, you don't know how to give it back. If you don't have it, you can't give it. Exactly. So when you said that, I was like, wow. And this is something that he asked in us. And then not only that, we could say that we love our Heavenly Father and Jesus. Hmm. But yet and still, we can't see them and we say we love them. But then our neighbors who we can see, we can't love them. Yeah. And so sometimes I think it's like, you know, like some people don't understand like love, you know, what love is all about. But then here you have the decision given from the book of Luke with the um, Good Samaritan. Yes. Yeah, you have the priests, church people. Yes. You know, because you're not Baptist like us, you're not Pentecostal like us, you're not, you're not, you know, you're not Methodist like us, or you're not yes. Jewish like us, or whatever, you're not like us, so you just pass, you're not one of us, so you pass. The Levi, which got the priest family, they also the Priests come from the Levi, the tribes of Levi. They also come. They know better the oracles of God given to them. Again, because you're not one of us, you're not white like us, you're not black like us, you're not West Indian like us, you're not African like us. So that's not our business. That's somebody else. But here you have a good Samaritan, didn't want to know where he come from. What do you have to do? You just take him up, pour oil on him, take him to the inn, spend his money and say, when I come back, if I have to pay some more, I'll pay for it. Yeah, Which of these you think was his neighbor? Exactly. He said, the one who had compassion. He said, well, go do likewise. Exactly. <laughs> He's speaking to the church. Go do likewise. Exactly. Because you're not black like us. Because you're not white like us. Because you're not, you know, Puerto Rican like us. Because you're not Dominican like us. Because you're not exactly. Argentinian like us. You're not Trimbagonian like us. You're not Jamaican like us. Because you're not one of us. Well, we're not going to help you. You know, exactly. And, 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 and that's just the point that I'm trying to get to is that, you know, that God, he, he, he loved all of us. You know, he like, as us being Christians, we have to show love a lot more better than what we doing because he, he asks us this here, you know, but yet and still we always say that we love the Father, mm -hmm. we love Jesus, but then your neighbor or someone right next to you, you, 
you can't show that same love, you know, and th and that's something that a lot of time that upsets me with the body of Christ is like, you know, sometimes you walk into a place and it's supposed to be, you know, the house of God and, and, and you're supposed to go there to worship, but yet and still <laughs> you walk in and, and you don't, you don't feel that love, you know, and we, we, we need to learn how to, to generate that love because when you think about how Jesus Christ, how he died for us, that's what you call love, you know, and when you think about how the father gave up his only begotten son for love, I think love need to be taught. What's my biggest thing is about love. Sometimes people say I just love too much, but I want to be an example as my father, you know, because love is so important. Mm. Well, look at, look at this here in Big John. He considered the love apostle. Big John chapter 13. And look at verses 34 and 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. You also love one another. By this man we know you, my disciples, if you have loved one to another. Yeah. And unto do with, with that, with God. How would yeah, you know you decide? Because you have, not because exactly. you're black, not because you're carrying a big Bible, not because you can quote another scripture. That's not we're going to look at these two verses. It. A new love. commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Well, mm -hmm. here, a man who knew no sin became sin exactly. while we were yet sinning. He died for us. That you love one another. Look at verse 35. And this, and by this man will know. Exactly. Whose man? Those folks out there. Exactly. This, by this man will know you, my disciple, if you have love one to another. Because for order for us to be able to, to, to have people to come into the kingdom, we have to have love for one another. Because if we don't have love for one another, how do you expect to draw men? Yeah. Like this man will know. Exactly, but how do, you, how do you expect to do that if we can't love each other hmm. and we want to go out there and minister to people, but yet and still once you get them in the church, the church don't have no love. So it's like you're defeating what God wants you to do. So we have to, you know, they have to, we have to start working on ourselves, yeah. you know. It's like catching the fish and throwing it back in the exactly. sea. Exactly. Yeah, and and, and the, the biggest sea. thing, like the biggest hindrance in the body of Christ is, the love they don't know they think well if i give you this th no that's not it that is not it and we need to love more mm. amen. Amen. amen hallelujah we want to give those that are listening on the radio and those that are viewing on the internet or wherever you are give you opportunity to receive jesus as lord and savior i was part of a church for five and a half years i wasn't even saved just a church person there might be a lot of people out there church people they go to church every week but they're not saved by the, by Jesus saying, that day many are going to say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? We cast out devil, done many wonderful works. He said, depart from me, I never knew you. So they, that was, that's church people, I've done many wonderful works. You know, cast out devils. You know, and they do all these church things, but they're not even saved. And you could have been at that. I was just like that. Going to church, like my wife and my preacher in the church, and, you know, going to church, walking with my Bible, is a Sunday thing to do, but not even saved. And you might have been there. You think about your grandparents and think about your people that you know you grew up with, your people in your workplace. Many times they're church people, but they're not saved people. Amen. So we want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you're not saved, stand for yourself. But if you're already saved, you can stand proxy for somebody. Think about your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your children. Think about people that you know on your job, people that you work with every day, and just good friends from the same building where you live. Think about those folks if you're already saved. Repeat these words I mean from the bottom of your heart. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. You said in your holy word. You said in your holy word. Whosoever come to me. Who should ever come to me. I'll in no way cast out. I would no way cast but out. But I'll take them in. But I'll take them in. So I come to you. So I come to you. You didn't cast me out. You didn't cast me out. But you took me in. But you took me in. And I thank you. And I thank you. Romans 10. Romans 10. Verse 13. Verse 13. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord. Who should ever call upon the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. Shall be saved. So I call upon your name. So I call Call upon your name. So I'm now saved. So I'm now saved. Romans 10. Romans 10. Verses 9 and 10. Verses 9 and 10. With a mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But with a heart man believe it unto righteousness. But with the heart man believe it unto righteousness. So I confess with my mouth. So I confess with my mouth. The Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. That he died. That he died. Went to hell. He went to hell. Spent three days. Spent three days. And three nights. And three nights. Just for me. Just for me. Because I confess that with my mouth. Because I confess that with my mouth. And I believe that in my heart. And I believe that in my heart. I'm now saved. I'm now saved. I now become. I now become. The righteousness. The righteousness. Of God. Of God. In Christ. In Christ. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. 521. 521. Jesus. Jesus. You represent me in heaven. 
You represent me in heaven. And I will. And I will. Represent you on earth. Represent you on earth. Jesus. Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For what you did for me. For what you did for on me. On Calvary. On Calvary. Shedding your blood. Shedding your blood. To redeem me. To redeem me. From the curse of the law. From the curse of the law. Spiritual death. Spiritual death. Poverty. Poverty. And sickness. And sickness. Satan. Satan. You're no longer my Lord. You're no longer my Lord. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Is my Lord. Is my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. I'll live for him. I will live for him. I'll serve him. I will serve him. I'll study his words. I will study his words. I'll be a good example. I will be a good example. For all to see. For all to see. And I thank you. And I thank you. In your name I pray. In your name I pray. Amen. And amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, it's not a time to be passive but active. Yes. Christianity yes. is not passive yes. but active. The Bible says when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walking through dry places seeking rest and find none, he's coming back. He come back, find the house empty, sweep and garnish. He's going to get seven more spirit, more wicked himself, come back to dwell there. And you'll last it as words in your first. You need to do something about it. Start reading your Bible right away. I want to suggest you start with the Gospel according to John. Read the first chapter. Take your time and read it. Don't try to read the Bible in one day. Take your time and go through that very slowly and read it. Again at lunchtime, at your lunch break, take some time again and read the same one chapter, first chapter. Night before you go to bed, you read the third chapter. Take your time. Tomorrow you're going to do the second chapter, do the same thing. Take your time. And what you're doing, you're feeding your spirit. You're occupying that house that Satan will when they come, when the auntie's come out to visit, there's no room. So feed your spirit. And as you go through the Bible, you come towards the end of it, the Spirit of God going to lead you somewhere. And in the meantime, ask God to lead you to a church that will feed you spiritually. Don't go to a church because your friend's going there because some social club. Don't go there. Go to our church and they don't have it. We teach on seven things you should look for. That's not all, but these are good pointers. I never, never, never hear nobody say anything like that before. Go to our church, you're looking for the Bible. You want to see even how much time they mention Jesus Christ. You want to see what the father man is married and things like that. You don't want to go to church, he's not married, just having sex with everybody in the church and, or she's. You, know, you don't want to be a place like that. That person committing fornication, the Bible says every sin that you sin is against, is outside the body. That's the only one against. So you want to find a few things you're looking for. They don't speak in tongues. Why you don't speak in tongues? Just tell me why you don't speak in tongues. And you want to find out something. You want to get some sort of guideline. What's, what's the makeup of the church? What's the bylaw? Of the church, you want to find something. What are the mission statement? You want to find some things about it before you go join. You just join some search club, like you end up in Jones on Guyana, go down to Guyana and eat, drink Kool Aid, and go to bed for all eternity on Waco, Texas, where you play a game because nobody tell you what to look for. Nobody tell me what to look for. I went to the church out in Bushwick. I mean, they, they, they greet me well, and I thought that was so good, and the music was good, but no word. You so say you might go to a church, the food might be good, but no word. A lot of nice people there, but no word. Nice building, but no word. Find out what you're looking for. Find out what to look for. You do these things and God going to bless you as you do these things. So don't just go like that. Ask him to lead you to a church that will feed you spiritually. You don't just go to a church and just sit down there a social club. That's not, you're not dealing with physical life, but you're dealing with eternal life. If you arrive in hell, you're not coming back. You arrive in hell, you're not coming back. This is something you take very serious. You're very serious about where you style your hair, where you buy your food, where you buy your clothes, how it look on you. You're, you're, you're very careful about that. But spiritual things, you need to be more careful. You need to be very, very careful about these things. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time that you have given us, the opportunities and privileges. Thank you for the victory in Jesus, this victory in honor. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory because all belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Good night. You have been listening to Pastor Randolph Ferdinand, Teachings from the Word. To get a copy of this teaching or any of the other series, call 347-533-4271. 347-533-4271. Or visit the Christian Community Center at 326 Junior Street in Brooklyn. That is... 326 Junior Street in Brooklyn. Sunday worship, 9.30, 10.30, and 12.30. Bible study, 6.30 p.m. on Monday nights. Like us on Facebook or YouTube at H2C3 Ministry. H2C3 Ministry. Go for the word. Why me, Lord? What have I ever done to deserve even one?